All right, so in my previous video, I have explained about conversion of phenylalanine into tyrosine and phenylketonuria. So you can watch that video as in the link that is appearing in the right upper corner right now. And also I have made a video on tyrosine catabolism into fumarate and acetoacetate. So, uh, and also I have explained about the disorders which are involved in catabolism of tyrosine. So the link for that video is appearing right now in the upper right corner. So you can watch that video to, more, uh, to know more details. Now the, this particular video, I am uh, in this particular video, I am explaining you about the special products that are coming from tyrosine. Now that tire and also the applied aspect related with that. Now the special products that are coming from tyrosine or uh, we are going to get dopamine, norepinephrine and epinephrine on one side. Tyrosine can be diverted into melanin formation in the skin melanocytes and tyrosine can also be diverted in the synthesis of T3 and T4 in thyroid hormones. Now the conversion of tyrosine into dopamine, norepinephrine and epinephrine, it involves four reactions. So first reaction is tyrosine into L-dopa done by tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme which needs tetrahydrobiopterin as a coenzyme. Now the L-dopa is converted into dopamine by dopa decarboxylase enzyme and that needs pyridoxal phosphate. Now the dopamine is converted into norepinephrine by dopamine beta oxidase which is also called as dopamine beta hydroxylase and this enzyme needs ascorbate and copper. Now norepinephrine is converted into epinephrine and this will be going on in the adrenal medulla especially and that uh, particular reaction needs phenylethanolamine and methyl transferase and it needs S-adenosylmethionin as a methyl group donor. Now there are these four reactions will be going on depending on uh, special tissues like in dopaminergic neurons only dopamine is synthesized because they have got only that set of enzymes. In sympathetic neurons only norepinephrine is synthesized because it has got only first three enzymes expressed whereas in adrenal medulla all the way down to epinephrine is synthesized because it has got all the enzymes. Now the applied aspect with this particular reaction here, conversion of norepinephrine into epinephrine is cortisol is going to induce phenylethylamine and methyl transferase. So cortisol is there in adrenal cortex and its concentration is found at higher uh, concentrations compared to other tissues in the adrenal medulla after adrenal cortex. So in the adrenal medulla, it is going to induce a gene coding for phenylethylamine and methyl transferase, thereby more and more norepinephrine is converted into epinephrine in the adrenal medulla. That is why in the adrenal medulla, you see 80% of norepinephrine, sorry, epinephrine compared to norepinephrine molecule. So what is the applied aspect of this particular thing? So cortisol is increased in Cushing syndrome. So in Cushing syndrome because there is increase in cortisol and this cortisol is going to induce PNMT enzyme thereby more epinephrine is synthesized. So when uh, now you have more epinephrine and cortisol so both these and uh, mole hormones they act synergistically on gluconeogenesis process. So in the gluconeogenesis there are four enzymes which are important and that is pyruvate carboxylase, phosphenyl pyruvate carboxykinase, then you have fructose 6-base phosphatase and glucose 6-phosphatase. All these four enzymes are induced by cortisol, epinephrine and of course they are induced by growth hormone glucagon also. So with this particular uh, induction process, so more and more gluconeogenesis is going on, uncontrolled gluconeogenesis will produce more and more glucose and that will get into the bloodstream and that can give rise to glucose intolerance in Cushing syndrome patients. That is why Cushing syndrome patients will have glucose intolerance going into type 2 diabetes and we refer that as steroid diabetes. Now the other applied aspect cl clinical disorders related with special product coming from tyrosine is albinism. Now the albinism is because of defect or deficiency in tyrosinase enzyme in the melanocytes. So when the tyrosinase enzyme is down it means tyrosine is not uh, entirely converted into melanin in the melanocytes 
and thereby decrease in the melanin occurs and because of the decrease in melanin so there will be decrease high basically there will be hypopigmentation in the tissue so this hypopigmentation can give rise to photophobia it can give rise to photodermatitis and photodermatitis uh, can uh, place these particular patients at risk of uh, skin cancer and also uh, patients with uh, albinism so they will have uh, they they'll be much more fairer than their uh, than the general population or maybe compared to their parents color and they'll have blonde hair and they'll have uh, red irish and that can give rise to photophobia so these are some of the signs seen there whereas in phenylketonuria you also see albinism like signs and symptoms because of deficiency of tyrosine there which is decreasing in going into melanin formation simply because there is not much tyrosine available uh, that albinism sign albinism like signs in phenylketonuria it is associated with the decrease in iq or mental retardation whereas in uh, classic albinism because of deficiency of tyrosinase enzyme so you don't really see decrease in iq or mental retardation you just see a generalized hypopigmentation photophobia photodermatitis increased risk of cancer so this is about a special products coming from tyrosine and the disorders associated with that particular pathway so as always thanks for watching and if you have any comments or feedback so don't hesitate to place them down below there and if you have any special request you can always um, uh, may, uh, place your request down there in the comment below so i'll try to make my make videos available as best as possibly that i can do